From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Maybe you've heard it before. Portland's form of government is in need of a makeover. The Rose City is the largest city in the country still using a commission form of government. A lot of folks say it's not working and they blame it for preventing Portland from moving forward on its most pressing problems. Over the years, Portlanders have voted eight times to keep the weird form of government, where the mayor is one of five commissioners elected at large, and the mayor assigns commissioners to various bureaus, even though they may have no expertise in that area. Is it time to change? Portlanders have a once in a decade opportunity to decide. A 20 member charter review commission is studying the issue and will make its recommendation to voters. In this episode of Straight Talk, we talk to members of the commission about their task. Why do we have a charter review? What are they studying? And how will they make the recommendation? Plus how you can make your voice heard. Welcome to my guests, Charter Commission members, Candace Avalos, Debbie Kitchen, and Robin Yee. And I wanna give you a little background on each of our guests. Candace Avalos is the executive director of Verde, co-founder of the Black Millennial Movement and chair of Portland's Citizen Review Committee, where she works to bring transparency and accountability to Portland police. Debbie Kitchen is a principal of Interworks LLC, a general contractor specializing in commercial tenant improvement and renovation and residential remodeling. Prior to joining the family business, Debbie was a regional economist for 18 years, mostly at the Northwest Power Planning Council. And Robin Yee works as a policy director at the Oregon State Legislature. Robin also recently worked in elections and advocacy at Oregon Futures Lab and at Apano, the Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon. Welcome everyone to Straight Talk. It's so nice to have you all here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Candace, let's begin with you. The commission has two committees. You are co-chair of the one looking at the city's form of government. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first, help us understand what is a charter? Why do we have one in Portland? And why do we have a charter commission? Great. Thank you so much for having us here. We're really excited for this opportunity to tell Portlanders why this is a big moment for us to uh, look at how our city is governed. Our charter is kind of like our constitution. So it governs how the um, commissioners do their work, how the bureaus do their work, and just overall how the city functions. And in the charter, it's written that every 10 years, a commission gets put together to look at that document, make any changes that can be big or small, and propose those to the voters directly. So that is why we are gathered, um, and we've got lots of big uh, questions that we're looking at for improving Portland's government. And what is your committee on the city's form of government looking at? What is your task? So form of government is really looking at one of those bigger questions, which is how do the city commissioners that get elected by the people actually govern the city? As you mentioned in the intro, uh, Portland is the last large city to have a commissioner form of government. And what that means is that the different commissioners appointed by the mayor get to um, oversee and have executive power over different bureaus. So the Water Bureau, Bureau of Transportation, Environmental Services, things like that. And they can um, have executive authority for how those bureaus function. But in a lot of um, other cities, more modern forms of government are something like a mayor council form where the mayor has a larger executive authority, whereas our current mayor is more uh, really just has like that one of five vote um, as opposed to having more executive authority or a manager council form, which is where you have a city manager that helps to um, oversee the functions of the bureaus with the help of the council or with the you know, authority of the council. So um, we're kind of looking at those two things, but I think what's really important to know is that often we think about our form of government in these buckets, but there's lots of questions that we're looking at underneath those. So who gets to write the budget? Um, how do you appoint either a city manager or a chief administrative officer? How do you write and make laws? All of those questions underneath the form are what we're exploring that we can make it unique to Portland and what we need. And Robin, you're the co-chair of a second committee looking at elections, how Portland elects its council members. What is your mission on that committee? What are the members tasked with doing? 
Right. So for the elections committee, right, uh, elections are something we're very familiar with. Uh, the, it feels like there's always constantly one happening. But at the heart of what we're trying to answer is a question about voice. You know, who has it in Portland? How much are they being heard? And how well can our elected government be hearing and, and listening to those voices? You know, we're also really interested in uh, lowering barriers for participation so that more voices can be heard. We want to value people's thoughts, you know, when they offer them at the election. And we want to make sure that our government reflects the city that it leads. Um, I think our committee's, you know, really embracing the opportunity to think about how Portland should better choose a government, you know, for the people, by the people. And, you know, our, we feel like our uh, the, the elections work is co-equal in importance to form of government, you know, the committee that uh, Candace helps lead because who we select to lead our city is fundamental to how they will then navigate governance and you know address the solution uh, the issues that Portlanders send them to city hall to to fix. And, and Debbie, you're a member of both of these committees. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the uniqueness of the current commission form of government. Why do you think we're the only large city to still have it? And what are you studying? Well, we're looking at issues related to, um, you know, the form of, in form of government. Um, what are the, how can we make the government, our local government, more responsive to voters, more responsive to the issues, able to cope with some of the big picture problems that our city faces, such as, um, you know, houselessness or uh, police oversight. So there's a number of issues that we're looking at and, the form of government has come up to votes many times, but it sometimes has been turned down by voters. And there was disagreement on the city council at the time the, the, of the most recent vote. This one, it, um, our city council is asking us to make a change uh, in many cases, uh, not all the council members, but many of them. And we are hearing from people from all over the city asking us to look at this and how can we make our government more effective, more responsive, more, um, you know, answer and accountable to the people. The City Club of Portland issued two reports on Portland's form of government and it concluded, quote, our form of government is inequitable and in need of significant reform. Candace, will you help us understand what the problem is with our current form of government? Why should people listening to this show care about this? So part of the problem with the commission form of government is that there's a lot of confusion on who has the responsibility to do things and who has the authority to do so. Some have argued that when commissioners have direct executive power over bureaus as they do in our current form, it makes it easier for things to move more quickly or for decisions to get made quicker. But at the same time, uh, it also creates these siloed efforts that make it hard for those bureaus to be collaborative on a united strategic vision for the city when tackling these really complex problems, social and structural. So making the structural change on who has authority and executive power could work to shift some of those problems. And that's what we're really studying in the form of government committee. Well, let's talk about some of the things that you've been doing. You've been having a lot of hearings. Robin, we're taping this Thursday afternoon and your elections committee met last night. Tell us about your meeting, some of the things you discussed, and did you agree to advance any of these ideas? Yeah, we um, had a great meeting last night. Uh, we're finding a lot of agreement uh, and shared understanding around what we're hearing and you know, analyzing as the problems underlying um, our form of government and, and city council elections. The fun part is you know, exploring the ways in which our solutions can start addressing these underlying problems uh, based on what we've kind of set out as our North Stars, right? Of wanting a more trustworthy government, one that has more participation, more accountability and things like that. So you know, last night we um, approved uh, resolutions for, you know, if you will, for areas of agreement. So we wanted to advance, you know, um, that we are looking to increase the size of city council because we just need more councilors tackling the big issues of our time. And we also approved um, wanting to explore more the form of voting that allows uh, for elections to be cited in one election period and for more of voters' preferences to be captured. And then we've uh, additionally, um, so th those two buckets were things that we found a lot of agreement around. And then there were four other areas we wanted to, we had agreement to continue researching even more 
uh, going forward, which is looking at multi-member districts, um, looking at you know proportional representation, and we can talk more about that. But you know, and the timing of elections, campaign finance, and expanding democracy and opportunities for people to vote. I mean, you talked about preferences. Is that the ranked voting? What what's that all about? Yeah. Um, so we've definitely you know heard a lot. I've been thinking about alternative forms of voting that allow. Um, yeah, voters to, to express more than just one selection. So one example would be ranked choice voting, where voters would have the ability to rank candidates in order of their preferences. They could give their top choice, but they could also give, you know, a second choice of that first choice wasn't um, able to, you know, advance the election or, or be elected and a third choice and so on. And, um, you know, the ultimate effect would be that, um, you know, the, the underlying uh, positives would be that voters get more choices. They get to vote their conscience the first time rather than having to strategically decide, I'm really into this candidate, but I don't know if they'll be able to advance, right? Um, and we end up with more voters who are likely to have uh, someone who they did support uh, emerge victorious. And I think that benefits all of Portland when we feel like we have a government that you know, the majority wanted. And Candace, you were also at part of that meeting last night. Is there anything you want to add? And tell us when your committee will be meeting again about some of your ideas for form of government. Well, the um, issues that we're tackling on form of government and city city elections are very interconnected. So, for example, um, we had our meeting prior to uh, the city elections one last night, and uh, one of the things that came out of our committee was that increasing the size of council is really connected to the ideas that we have around how we change the form of government. So, there's some collaboration that we're doing between the committees to say we really need you know elections to figure out this question because that will inform um, how the form of government is structured. Um, so we're just trying to really make sure that we're collaborative in that process um, when we're answering these questions. And, and Debbie, to kind of expand on that, you're a member of both committees. You're studying both issues separately. Tell us more about how these two things, Portland's form of government and how we elect council members impact each other. What, what's the interplay there? Well, it's really, uh, there is a lot of interplay because if you're trying to look at how to make government more accountable, um, if, if commissioners are no longer directly running bureaus, um, they have more time to meet with constituents, to understand the needs of the community, to study policy issues because their role changes. Their role changes to more policy and legislative role. So as they're doing that, they have more opportunity. And if we combine that with adding district elections so that constituents know who their representative is or representatives on the city council, and they have someone they can go to when they have a problem or they need help with something. So that also makes uh, our local government more accountable, more responsive, and more reflective of the community's concerns. So there are a lot of ways that they overlap and work together. And the League of Women Voters, as I showed at the top of the show, has a graphic that shows the eight times over the last 100 years, Portland residents have voted to keep the current quirky form of government. What do you think's up with that? Is it to keep Portland weird? I mean, how do you explain that? And, and Candace, what do you want voters to know? Well, you know, I definitely don't know what was going on in all of those elections and times change. Um, I think that right now voters are just wanting representation, they're wanting efficiency, they're wanting responsiveness. And so the timing is just really aligning right now, but also we're really committed to a community engaged process where we're bringing people along the way because ultimately what we recommend needs to go to voters for an actual vote on the ballot. And so we wanna make sure that by the time it gets to the ballot, people feel committed to the recommendations, they feel their voices are reflected in them and they will feel confident in voting for them. So that's what we're hoping can be different this time around. Um, we're really putting a lot of effort into that so that we get across the finish line. And we've been talking a lot here about all these different things you're studying. But to be clear, Candace, you're, you're not recommending anything yet. You don't have any preconceived notions of what you'll recommend as you go into this, right? Absolutely not. And this phase right now of doing all of our research is so critical so we can make sure we're doing all the hard work to figure out what are the pros and cons. 
um, because in any form of government, there's going to be advantages and disadvantages. So we're studying that um, and then looking at that against the community's needs and values and the outcomes that we're seeking and hoping again that, you know, when we talk about the forms of government, um, there's lots of little nitty gritty details for how you actually use that form of government. And we can tweak it in a way that fits what Portlanders want. So that is our task in the coming months. Well, thank you, guests. And as we go to break, here's a look at the Charter Commission website where you can sign up for updates and you can make comments. You can get on a list, a mailing list. And when we come back, find out what's next for the Charter Review Commission. When do Portlanders get to vote and how you can get engaged? We're back in two minutes. Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. You've, of course, heard the phrase, keep Portland weird, and we do have a weird form of government. So unique, in fact, Portland is the only large city in the country that still has the commission form of government. But is being weird when it comes to city government hurting the city? That's what a charter commission is studying right now, and they want your input. Welcome once again to my guests, Charter Review Commission members Robin Yee, Debbie Kitchen, and Candace Avalos. Thanks again, everyone, for being here, and I'm going to start this segment off with Debbie, and how will you come up with your recommendations? We've been talking about all these committees and what you're studying, the, the city form of government and elections, but how will you make your recommendations? What's the process, Debbie? Well, we're working in subcommittees now to uh, delve deeper into a lot of issues. And we have, you know, thousands of cities across the country, uh, examples that show many different forms and uh, uh, ways of organizing government. And so we're looking at results from uh, different cities across the country. We're looking at research studies. We're looking at, um, we are getting lots of community input, uh, both in a structured way and then comments. We have over 500 comments that have come in. We also met with all of the bureau directors in the city. Uh, we met with city council members. So uh, we are getting input from a wide variety of sources and looking at research uh, and the examples of many other cities. And Candace, how does this get referred to voters? I mean, how many of you have to agree on a recommendation and, and then what happens? Well, the Charter Commission has this really unique power in that if 15 or more of us, of the 20 of us, agree on a recommendation, it goes straight to voters on a ballot, on a ballot measure. So um, that is uh, unique um, compared to other commissions. Um, but even if we can't get 15 or more in agreement, there's still the option for if 11 to 14 of us agree on something, then it goes to city council for an official vote and then they refer it to the ballot. Anything less than you know half or 10 and below then does not get recommended. So obviously the goal is to come to consensus and um, definitely to do our best to have great consensus of over 15 so we can send things directly to the voters. And when do you expect this to hit the ballot? Well, we are hoping to have at least two of our biggest questions on form of government and how we run elections for the November 2022 ballot. And then we can, um, there are some other questions that we're going to be looking at that could end up on that ballot or could be at a, a later one, maybe May of 23. And we've talked about two different committees, but Robin, there is a third committee, ensuring community engagement. That's really been a theme. And I know one of your goals is to get community input and really reach out in the community. What do you want people to know about how they can be a part of this important process and decision? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole charter, and particularly with the community engagement committee, we've been putting a lot of um, thought and a meaningful effort into bringing the public along with us, right? Our 20 commissioners, we're not, you know, experts on any of these issues by any means. So we're really doing everything in a public process in a way that focuses on public education. And so that, you know, the voices that we don't typically hear from across the city, um, that they get the chance to both learn what we currently have, what's possible for the future, and then be able to engage and offer that. So without um, this charter commission has, is, you know, one of the best prepared, I think, to do this work than any of those previous efforts. Uh, with the resources, the buy-in from our community and the community partnerships that we've been able to uh, secure to, to do this work to engage with communities. And Laura, one, one thing I'll bring up is, uh, you know, you mentioned the, the 10 previous chances um, that Portlanders had of the election to change the form of government. 
you know, only two of those happened in the last 60 years. And both those times it happened in a, um, in a, in a, a time during the year when people weren't accustomed to having elections. And so the timing is really important. We're sending it to November 2022 when we expect there'll be a lot of engagement uh, with the elections here in Portland and across Oregon. Um, and it's just, you know, a high engagement gives us our best shot to, to know that if we change something, the most Portlanders uh, that we, we ever see come out and make that decision together. And I know right now you're in the phase of studying and then also trying to educate the community. I understand, uh, Candace, there's going to be a phase two to this process where you'll look at some other city policies. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so as we were deciding what were the big issues that we wanted to tackle, of course, some of the city's issues came up. So public safety, houselessness, um, climate change and climate resilience. So those are some of the other things that we do want to see. What are the ways that the charter and the structure of the charter can begin to address those? Um, and so we decided to have a phased approach where the biggest questions of uh, form of government and elections, which really will inform how we answer those other ones, we wanted to get out of the way first. So we're in our phase one. Um, this phase, you know, is going to go through March. And then we are planning on starting phase two in January. January, well, where we will look at some of those other big questions and see how we want to implement those changes in the charter, as well as just like little, you know, detailed things that need to change in the charter. Um, so we're going to tackle all of those um, in the next phase starting in January. And Debbie, what, what has this process been like for you so far as a member of the commission on both committees? Oh, I think we, we just have a really uh, strong and dedicated commission. As I think City Council really looked at in shaping this uh, going forward with an approach that focused on equity and uh, change. And so they brought together a group of, of commission members who are very diverse and represent a number of different age groups. It's not your typical panel of older men. So um, I think that is really critical and has really informed. We have a wonderful group of commissioners and they work very hard. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time at the beginning laying the groundwork and doing some foundational work about our agreements and how we would work together and how we would make decisions. It, it felt like it was taking a long time, but I think it was really critical because it is the foundation. And since I'm in construction, I'll tell you that Foundations are very, very important. So we spent a lot of time on that, but now we've moved into um, other parts of the house, so to speak, and we're we're actually doing the you know framing, I would say. So uh, I think it's been a great process, and it's been very open and transparent. People can look at the website, they can watch our meetings, they can watch live during our meetings. And they can also, uh, what, you know, go back to meetings that have happened in the past. Let me jump so in it's here. A very open. We're, we're running out of time, but I want to give Robin about 30 seconds for a final thought. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, we, yeah, second what Debbie says, the foundational, we've created, we spent a lot of time creating North Stars, which is what we would, you know, for the next year, judge our work and our engagement towards. And we spent a lot of time thinking about you know, at the heart of this, what's the experience for a Portlander, a voter, someone who engages with government? How would it feel for them to have a government that's responsive to them? How would it feel for them to feel like they had choices at the ballot and that their voice was, you know, the was shown in the result of the election? So that's really been anchoring us. And we, um, you know, ask the public to also share their experiences with government, with elections, and that'll really help us round out our perspective as we make decisions going forward. And Candace, just 30 seconds for a final thought. I'll just say that, you know, changing our government, changing our charter is not a panacea, but structural issues matter. And we are really looking to help improve the functionality and efficiency of the government in order to better deliver services for Portlanders and for Portlanders to feel like their electeds represent their needs and are acting on them. So we're feeling really glad that this opportunity has come up and we feel strongly we can make some change. And once again, here's the website where you can find out more about the Charter Review Commission and sign up to listen into their sessions or make comments. Candace Avalos, Robin Yee, Debbie Kitchen, thank you for joining us. And thank you for watching and listening. Remember, you can get Straight Talk as a podcast. Search for KGW Straight Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Join us next week when we take a hard look at gun violence in the Portland metro area.
We'll see you next week for Straight Talk. Have a great week.